Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV with me, Aditi Bhardwaj, and today I'm being joined by Professor David Reich, who is a scholar of genetics and is professor at the School of Medicine at Harvard University. And today we will be talking about the role of artificial intelligence in transforming Indian healthcare system. Well, first of all, uh, thank you, David, for uh, speaking to NDTV. You can you please elaborate about uh, the role of artificial intelligence in transforming healthcare, and is India prepared for a revolution? Well, certainly, it's uh, our experience in New York has been one of developing clinical decision support for doctors and dietitians and nurses over the last several years. And so, in our experience, it's about bringing the right team to the right patient at the right time. For example, we have a list every day that we use and generate from our uh, artificial intelligence algorithm that sends dietitians to the patients in the hospital that are most likely to have malnutrition so that the dietitians have professional satisfaction in being able to find and to treat the patients who have the greatest need. We do the same thing with our intensive care doctors. They come out of the intensive care unit and see the patients in the hospital who are most likely to need their services and hopefully prevent them from becoming ill to the point where they would actually need an intensive care unit. So those are two examples of the ways that we're using it currently. And very much looking forward to working with colleagues here in India. We've begun a collaboration with Ramaya Memorial Hospital here in Bengaluru. And the hope is that we will be able to share our know-how. And uh, coming to the technology capital of India is something that we feel is very important for both because the things that you'll be able to do here will be different in nature and character than what we do in New York. And we will both learn from one another. Now, Mr. Reich, let's also talk about the future of healthcare system. How can artificial intelligence improve it? Well, the, uh, the problems in India and in uh, the U.S. Are, are different, of course. And one of the things that uh, we've focused on in, in New York is using them, uh, using the AI tools within the hospital itself. So, for example, I gave you those examples of uh, malnutrition, clinical deterioration, that's people who might need an ICU, also prediction of delirium and falls, which are all problems that occur in hospitals. In uh, India, there are fewer electronic health records in hospitals at present. And it's not that the health records themselves do the AI, but they serve as a platform for communication. What I see as a tremendous opportunity here in India is to use AI to develop tools for the delivery of care to the population at large. I've been very impressed by people's devotion here to public health, to extending the care that we have in the cities to those in the rural settings. And that's where I feel we're going to see the uh, biggest initial revolution because of the widespread uh, dissemination of technologies like smartphones and access to the internet. And in that circumstance, we can probably help by extending public health into broader audiences and improving access to medical care. Right. Can you please talk about if artificial intelligence technology can also reduce the response time in case of emergencies in hospital? I'll give an example of something that's in progress right now in New York. We work with uh, a partner and we have an AI chatbot. And patients who come to our website at Mount Sinai can choose to have an interaction with the chatbot, which will help them decide, should they make an appointment to see a doctor sometime in the future? Should they uh, have a telehealth appointment where a doctor or an advanced practice nurse speaks with them through a video connection? Should they go to an urgent care center or should they go to an emergency room? And we found that it's very helpful in reassuring people and in uh, preventing overcrowding in our emergency rooms because people feel more comfortable finding care that is appropriate to the problem that they have. 
But Mr. Raik, in India, you know, people do not go to hospital web page in case of emergencies to use the artificial intelligence chatbot that you are discussing. They rush to nearby hospitals. For example, a road accident. How will artificial intelligence help in such cases? Well, yes, within an emergency department, there have been many examples. Uh, I've focused more on what I've seen in the United States where you can do better triage. When someone arrives in an emergency department, based upon the characteristics that the patient uh, uh, shows at the time of presentation. But I think that the example uh, would not be the accident on the road. I think the example would be someone who might be remote from a hospital, let's say in a rural setting, and they have a rash, or they have a fever, or they have a cough. And it's not always so easy for them to get to a health facility. And it may be possible in that case. I've been informed in this last several days that I've been here in Bengaluru that culturally people want to see a doctor. They want to be examined by a doctor. And I certainly understand that. But as we build the confidence of the people in the abilities of AI-driven technologies to help, I think that there is a, a bright future here where people will come to accept the technology, but it has to be in the right settings. So certainly not the accident on the road, but perhaps more the rash, the child with a cough, that sort of problem. Now, Mr. Reich, how can artificial intelligence help doctors in better diagnosis and treatment? Well, the uh, large language models, uh, things like ChatGPT4, have begun to move into medicine in a very interesting way. So for example, uh, there are preliminary uh, efforts, I wouldn't say that are mature yet, and uh, something that I would uh, trust as a physician as of yet. But when uh, we have a physician talking to a patient, the AI is listening and using voice recognition, it listens to the conversation between the doctor and the patient. And what it can do in that circumstance is two things. First of all, instead of the doctor sitting at a computer screen typing in information, the doctor can be looking at, interacting with, examining a patient. And then the AI is able to write a medical note explaining exactly what was discussed and then even move to the next level of providing uh, a potential diagnosis. Now, it's important that the doctor, the nurse, the person who is trained, the person who has a license to practice medicine or nursing is the person that makes the final decision. Because in many circumstances, the AI will be correct, but in certain circumstances, the AI may be wrong. So we have to depend upon the clinical expert, the doctor or the nurse, to listen to what's being said and what's being written and what's being outputted by the AI and making the final decision about what the best thing is for the patient. However, we might think of it in that case, uh, not as artificial intelligence, but as augmented intelligence. It's helping the doctor or the nurse do a better job. Right, and uh, you know, let's talk about now India's population where you're uh, you know, trying to bring in a revolution. Now, according to a report, India's population is expected to peak at 1.7 billion in 2060s, which will surpass China. What are your thoughts? Well, India's population is vast. And uh, the commitment that I've seen of the hospitals, of the government, to focusing on the health of the population is something which is really quite remarkable to see and something which gives me great hope that this massive nation, the subcontinent that has just grown to the level of being the largest population center on earth, but also one of the technological centers of growth on earth is very well poised to use technology to extend healthcare in ways that were just not possible previously. We'll never have enough doctors or nurses for a population that large. So what we need to do is extend the capabilities of those doctors and nurses to care for more patients using the technology. Now, Mr. Reich, you know, before letting you go, I want to know your opinion on uh, can artificial intelligence replace humans? Can such thing happen in healthcare? Well, there, in certain circumstances, uh, we do want 
uh, uh, fewer humans. So for example, people who answer telephones to make appointments for doctors, they should, you know, uh, they, we wouldn't really need that because the AI should be able to help with scheduling and providing access. But uh, I think the doctors and the nurses don't go away. They become better at what they do. As I said before, it's about augmenting their intelligence. So the AI helps them decide more quickly what the problem is and how to treat it. The AI helps them take care of more patients in the same amount of time, increasing their efficiency and increasing the accessibility of the population to the expert care that they need. Right. Uh, thank you, Professor David Reich, for speaking to NDTV.